Fairly recently, I was in a conversation in which a seemingly very intelligent person made the assertion in the comments section of this video uh, that in order to point out the evil done in a god's name with the intention of showing that morality does not come from God, that I first had to show that people of faith and people without faith are equal in measures of morality. In other words, I had to show that non-believers are morally equal to arguably morally superior religious fa religiously faithful people. In the discussion that followed, a meta-analytical review with a link in the sidebar was referenced in an attempt to show that religious people are more moral than their less religious or non-religious counterparts. Several sections of the uh, review were cited, uh, which I will address individually. In a meta-analytical meta review of 42 independent studies, it was discovered that people who were highly religious were, on average, 29% more likely to be alive at any given follow-up point than less religious people uh, apparently are. Which has to do with morality how? Is it necessarily moral to have a long life, or does being more moral denote or impart longevity? Number two, religiousness is also significant, albeit weakly, associated with psychological well-being. In a meta-analytical review of 147 independent effect size studies, uh, that effect sizes that was published in this journal uh, found that religiousness, measured in a wide variety of ways, was associated with lower rates of depressive symptoms. Well then, I guess believing that one is a member of God's chosen people has a wonderful effect on mood. And uh, I'll, get, I'll make another comment on that a little bit later. Consider also the negative association of religiousness with crime, uh, delinquency, and uh, sexual behaviors. A meta-analysis meta of 60 effect sizes uh, reveals that religiousness is associated with lower rates of crime and delinquency, uh, and is even more strongly associated with lower rates of victimless crimes such as gambling and drug use. Moreover, studies of uh, representative samples of the U.S. Uh, youths show that adolescents who are religious wait longer before first intercourse, uh, have lower rates of having given or received oral sex, and have lower rates or even uh, of even having been pregnant, uh, of ever having been pregnant. On the crime, delinquency, and lower rates of pregnancy, I suppose that that simply has to do with religiousness, with the person's religiousness, and has absolutely nothing to do with the time spent with one's family through social gatherings that religion encourages. With adolescents who are religious, uh, waiting longer before first intercourse, that is true. I, I completely agree with that. but. When they do give in, usually in college, they are less likely to use a condom than their less religious counterparts. On lower rates of adolescents having ever given or received oral sex being a good thing, that's just because uh, oral sex is considered immoral and has nothing to do with religious influence on culture. It's just inherently immoral. And last, religious youths uh, also tend to have higher grade point averages and standardized test scores than do their less religious counterparts. Indeed, it, a meta-analysis meta of 15 studies on the association of religiousness and school achievement in black and Hispanic American youths found that religiousness was positively associated with grade point average and achievement test scores. Again, this has simply to do with religion and the 
and the level of religion that the individual team espouses and has nothing to do with the effect of spending more time with one's family. On the whole, I'd say that referring to this review as evidence that religious people are more moral than their non-religious or less religious counterparts is specious at best. Um, if this review has any uh, relation to morality, it shows a higher level of contemplation of one's actions in accordance to their belief in basically the biggest big brother of them all and what he wants. Most of, these, most of the studies referenced were done in the United States or developed nations where religious freedom is a cherished value. I wonder how the morality of these highly religious and therefore, according to the argument, more morally conscientious people of the Hariti of Israel, members of Hamas, uh, witch-burning Christians of Salem, or Africa today, uh, the Army of God, and or many others who believe they are the chosen people would appear. So far, I still haven't seen any evidence to suggest that religious people are inherently more moral than non-religious people, or less religious people. And if they really are, their morality does not stem from, or it's not, and it's not derived from, uh, their religion, or belief in God. They simply think it is, and they think that they're following what they argue to be objective moral standards from a book authored by the creator of the universe. And whatever is interpreted from that book as moral simply is moral, whatever that happens to be. And really, this is what makes religion dangerous, because virtually anything can be, and has been, justified by a holy text. From philanthropy to systematic rape to using human shields to genocide, uh, religion fails in every way to account for evil done in its name. Not just evil, but evil done in its name. And the name of the god or the god concept that that particular or any particular religion surrounds. I think that I presented a good argument in a previous video here um, that biblical uh, and more generally holy morality is moral relativism, relativism backed up by unprovable claims of exclusivity to the absolute unquestionable truth about morality, and moreover, the very existence of the universe and everything in it, thus making any act that can be, in some cases even partially substantiated by a holy text, moral by default, in the eyes of any one particular group of the faithful. So really, in order to say that pointing out the evil done in God's name does not refute the claim that morality does not come from God, or at least suggest that morality does not come from God, one must show that the morality of the faithful is equal to that of the faithful that either people of faith operate on some sort of objective faith-based morality and or that the people who have performed acts of evil in the name of your God or a God are less religious or don't actually believe in God. Good luck with that. 